The Daytona 500 is looking for a few good men. Men like Dale Earnhardt, the intimidator in the black car, who's never won the big race here in 14 tries. The Daytona 500 is looking for a few good sons, like third generation speedster Kyle Petty, the pole sitter. The king is gone, but he's not forgotten. Another racing son is in the front row today, Dale Jarrett, fleet son of former champion Ned, enlisted by car owner and three-time Super Bowl winning coach Joe Gibbs. A few good men in a few fine machines, looking to see who's faster. Over 100,000 good men and women, boys and girls, have jammed and crammed their way into the Daytona International Speedway. Wherever you look, from the grandstand to the tops of cars in the infield, everyone is getting set for the Super Bowl of stock car racing, the Daytona 500. Hello, everyone. I'm Chris Economaki on pins and needles as we close in on the start of the great American race, the Daytona 500. All the preparation, all the strategizing, all the tweaking and tuning of engines is done. It's time to race. And all eyes are on Dale Earnhardt, undefeated in three preliminary races this week. Can he do it again today? Mixed with the excitement is a sense of nostalgia. Last year, this sport bade farewell to its king, Richard Petty. But guess who's on the pole? Yep, his son, Kyle Petty. And alongside Kyle is Dale Jarrett. Does that name sound familiar? It should. His dad is my CBS broadcast colleague, Ned. And earlier this morning, two proud fathers walked the backstretch and looked back in wonderment. Richard, this is Daytona 500, and you're not in the field. No, I'm not starting uh, the race car, but I'm starting the field, so that's a little bit different. You know, it hasn't been that long ago that our kids were playing on the beach, staying over at the Royal Beach Motel, and here they are on the front row for the Daytona 500. Yeah, I don't know that means they're getting old or we're getting old, Ned, but, uh, you know, it makes us feel real good, I think, that, you know, we come over here and race years ago, and... Uh, then, uh, you know, our kids, like you said, played around. Now they're out here racing with each other. So I know I'm real proud of the whole thing. Can you get as much of a thrill out of Kyle winning as you did when you won? Uh, probably more of a thrill. Uh, you know, I expected myself to win and, and uh, put the pressure on myself to win. But I think when, uh, when your son does what you want to do and what you want him to do, I think that uh, that's probably the biggest thrill. Well, now, I can imagine those little boys when they were playing out here in the sand in the infield that they were saying, my daddy's faster than your daddy. <laughs> well, here we are now, and uh, uh, your son's <laughs> faster than mine, at least in qualified. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we're going to look at it from that standpoint. We're going to look at it and say, hey, guys, y'all go out and do the best you can. Be careful with the thing and beat each other. So uh, I think that's the way we're looking at it. All right, good luck to your all son. Right. Thank you all. Hi, I'm Mike Joy at the front of the Daytona 500 field. Sons of famous fathers. Richard Petty, who waved the green flag today, follows his dad to victory lane in the Daytona 500. Davey Allison's father, Bobby, won it. Davey did, too. And now, how about it, pole sitter, Kyle Petty? I'd like to win it. Uh, you know, since my grandfather won the first race here at the big track, and my father's had so much success here, and, and Petty Enterprise in general has, uh, I'd like to add my name to that list, too. You a little nervous? <laughs> I tell you what, surprisingly, I'm not as nervous now for the 500 as I am for the qualifying races. The qualifying races always give me butterflies, but, uh, you know, to come out and be on the pole here is, is a big honor and a big accomplishment for this team. And we're a little uptight, but hopefully after they drop the green flag, we'll be all right. Good luck today. Sons of famous fathers. Opposite on the front row, his dad was twice Grand National Stock Car Champion. You met him a moment ago, Ned Jarrett. His older brother is a TV commentator, Glenn, and here's Dale Jarrett trying to be another second-generation guy to hit victory lane today. Yeah, we'd sure like to put this interstate battery Chevrolet in victory lane. And, uh, I believe Jimmy Maycar and Joe Gibbs have given me the race car to do that. Are you a little nervous this morning? I was a little bit at first, but uh, we're getting ready to race, getting away from everything, and I'm where I belong right here in the cockpit of this car, so uh, I think everything's fixing to go away and just get down to racing. Okay, good luck, Dale. Thanks a lot. There's another son of a former racing champion in this field, and he's won everything but the Daytona 500. Let's meet him with David Hobbs. In 89, 90, and 91, Dale Earnhardt led this race with 10 laps to go, never get to win the Daytona 500. Dale, you've won 19 races here with yesterday afternoon's victory. When are you going to win the Daytona 500? Why not today? 
<laughs> you know, our chances are good. We've really run good all week. Race car here one Thursday, so we're, we're in good shape. I think uh, our best chance to win the Daytona 500. Feel good. You've had a very strong week so far, and we hear on very good authority that you've got an even better engine today than you've been using all week. Well, it's a brand new one, and uh, it is a good engine. So we got 500 miles to run, 200 laps, so we're going for them. Well, I'm sure that's very good news for the rest of the field. Now let's go to Ken Squire on the roof. Well, thank you, David. Dale Earnhardt has won everything here, and in this Daytona 500, he has everything going for him but luck in the last 14 occasions. We're to see what's to happen today. Approximately three minutes and counting before the 41 best men today hit the triggers. They're all primed and ready to go and send this thing into orbit for 200 laps. And the race today takes us back a few years, back to about 1978 in speed. They had colossal competition in those days, but it was just as competitive and just as dangerous. And what's brought all this about, Neil Bonnet? And one thing that's really added to competitiveness of the racing, NASCAR has always had these big rear spoilers on the back of these race cars, but there's been some changes. The principle behind this thing here is like flaps on an airplane. Airplane, you turn them down, you get lift. On a race car, you stand them up, you're going to create downforce and drag, really stabilize the race car. If you look here, the black area you can see in 92 is 280 inches. This white area, they've given them a lot more area to nail the cars down. If you, The key to it is at 40 degrees where last year they were racing with this thing back, now they stand it up. It's driving the cars in the racetrack and nailing them down, and these race car drivers are getting pretty cocky in those things. <laughs> and to the two-time Winston Cup champion, Ned Jarrett, what's this going to mean for this race? Well, I think it does make the drivers a little bit braver when they go into the turns, and I think that we'll see a lot of two abreast and maybe even three abreast racing sometimes because they just feel more confident with the cars. But those speeds are still going to be up there. We'll see laps of 191, 192 miles an hour in drafting. And one thing that those spoilers have done is bringing drafting back to where it's really effective now because that big spoiler opens up a wide area of vacuum behind the car. So we'll see a lot of cars trying to build up momentum and shoot around someone else. It's going to make for some exciting racing. The electricity is building right now and the momentum. And let's go down trackside the Reverend Hal Marchman for the invocation. <laughs> 